Boom. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time you're watching this video. My name is Trey Llewellyn, and today we're going to talk about how a man is made or unmade by themselves. So I got Jared here. Jared's rocking and rolling. There we go. What's up, Jared? Ger 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 Gerard. Gerard. So basically, here's the deal. Is I want to tell you a story about how I am so lucky, uh, is what people say. How, so how many times, raise your hand. How many times, can you imagine people are raising their hands like at the other, you're like, oh, me. So how many times has somebody said, oh, you, insert your name, are just the luckiest person uh, ever? What's up, Jason Sparks? What's up, Louie? What's up, Dylan? Good to see you all here. Enrique, we got Miranda. Everybody's joining in. What's up? And when Shane, oh, man, everybody's coming in. So here's the deal is I want to tell you a story of how, how uh, so I get, that, I, I, I get told that all the time, like, oh, you're just so lucky, right? Because no one ever sees uh, the, the previous work uh, to your, um, what's up, Jim, to, to what your, your life is, right? So I want to tell you a story real quick. So I was in college, had a, I had a friend, still a friend, uh, named Keith, and me and Keith are, are coming back from Walmart, <laughs> and we're in college, so we don't make any money, right? we're, we're dirt broke, and uh, we're, we're heading home, and, uh, and I was like, oh, man, I was like, hey, do you mind, I was driving this little Mazda Speed, and a little protege. And I was like, hey, man, do you mind if I, uh, if I just jump in the car wash real quick? It's like this little ringy dink uh, car wash. He's like, oh, yeah, no, 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 no problem. So I was like, okay, I'll just go in there real quick. So we go through the little automated one. It's like these ones where it's like those bricks, and you pay the little machine, no automation or anything like that. And then you just go in and you sit, and then the car wash goes around. It's one of those. So we're, um, so we're sitting there. So we go, go in. Um, and there's no cars there. So I go pull up, and... Uh, I'm like, I, before I put money in, I was like, Keith, I always check to make sure there's no other little money in the coins. I was like, have you ever done that? He's like, no, I've never done that. I was like, whoa, there's some coins in here, dude. And so I'm reaching in, and there's like eight coins. And they're not coins, like quarters. They're actually car wash coins. They're worth a dollar each. And so I had like eight, there's like eight dollars in this car wash machine. And Keith's just just like, what the hell's going on? And so... uh so I'm, I'm getting these coins out, like eight of them. I'm like, oh, my gosh, we're rich. I'm going to have, like, two free car washes. And so I roll out my window. My windows are tinted. And I have all these things. I'm so excited. And I look over, and the um, uh, the owner comes out of the little manager window, little manager door. Have you ever heard this story? Yeah, heard and this. so he comes out of the door, and I own the coins. And I was like, oh, Keith, he probably saw me. He probably saw that I got all these coins, these free coins, and so he's probably going to take them away from me. And so he comes up to the window, and I roll it down, and uh, it's so funny because I'm reliving the story. So this guy, this manager comes up, I'm just like waiting for him, I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, I don't know if you know this, but we're doing a special day where we're giving, you, we're giving everybody free car washes, and he goes, I want to make sure we got one, and hands me a ticket for a free car wash. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, really, thank you. Thank you, Keith. Keith, did, did you see that? I got a free car wash today. And meanwhile, he obviously knows that I damn well have, you know, $8 worth of car washes. And he's just like, you're the luckiest guy I know. And so it's so funny because it's just weird how we see that stuff in our world. Like all, like stuff like that happens all the time. Uh, it's where you just never know, you know, what life's going to bring you. So anyways, uh, what's up, Jim? What's up, Josh? What's up, George? Adrian, good to see you guys here. Hopefully you enjoyed the story so far. So I wanted to, I was listening, uh, I was listening this morning, I, get, I got up at like 4.30 this morning. Jerry, what time did you get up? <laughs> ask Jerry, what, uh, hey, everybody ask Jerry what time, oh, he, Jerry, what time did you get up, man? Uh, he was like, it was got, eight, he knows the time, he knows six. the time, he's trying to lie now. Jerry, they know you're lying, because like you paused too long. Seven too long ago, pause. Out of bed, like seven or eight. Too I long ago, seven know. or eight, that's was an it, hour it difference, five. that's an hour difference, Jerry. So here's the, it was definitely not five. So I got up at four thirty, and I'm just bragging now. So basically, yeah. I was listening to. So I go from I go from doing a power day for like sixty minutes, or yeah, uh, yeah, sixty minutes, and then I go into uh, the elliptical for twenty. And during the elliptical, I always watch uh, just some sort of like I don't know episode or some something or other, or something that I can you know kind of get something from, and I just kind of scroll through and see what happens. And then YouTube does a pretty good job of letting me know what's up going. What's up going on, Lindsay? Uh, so here's what's crazy is I'm, uh, I'm watching, I'm watching this thing. It's Oprah of all things. So don't make fun of me because I was watching some Oprah and, uh, this is like, it was like Oprah from 20 years ago when she, when she came out and she's talking about this book called the secret. So I don't know if you guys ever, ever heard of the book called the secret. Have you heard of the book called secret Jared? Nope. He's not. We got to teach him. We got a mentor Jared here. 
He doesn't even know what's going on. No, it's called the secrets. That's actually the law of attraction. Do you know what the law of attraction is? Yeah, like how like, people like you. Like, right? Oh boy. Okay. Like, we need we need to we need to work on we need to work on Jared, guys. All right. So please send your law of attraction to Jared today. But here's the deal: is we were talking about law of attraction, and she was all these all these people were you know kind of have their their their, their, their it's like woo woo right a little woo woo going on, and this lady said it so right in the audience of how she understood the law of attraction, which is probably one of the most popular laws of the world that we live in this universe thing, and she goes the law of attraction is like when you're at a restaurant, okay. And when the server comes over and she's like, hey, I would like a uh, steak, a potato, and some broccoli. You expect for that server to come back and give you steak, potatoes, and broccoli, right? Like that's what you ordered. So that's what you expect. The same thing applies to your life, to the universe, to what you order through the universe. So things like, man, I absolutely have the worst family of all. Well, no joke because you're ordering the worst family that you have, right? Like she talks about how, you know, me and, my, me and my spouse, we never get along, we're always in fighting. Well, you know what, that's what you're putting out to the universe right now, that's what you're ordering for the law of attraction, and that's what you're going to receive. And so it's interesting of how what we do, Jared, I'm watching you, you're just like, he's having epiphanies right now. Jared's having, Jared's having breakthroughs right now, right? It's a good point, right? Yeah. It's like, man, I drive the shittiest car on the street right now. Well, no joke, I wonder why. Because you put out to the universe, that you are not grateful for the car you currently drive, so of course you drive the most junked up car you know that you have there. So the deal is, is, is the same, the Maserati, the, the Mazda Roddy, the Mazda Roddy. So it's way better than a Ford. So here's the deal, is what are you putting out to the universe? What are you shouting out? What are you ordering? And that is what the title is for, as a man is made or unmade by himself. It's all about what you're putting out to the universe, what you're telling it, the law of attraction will circle around. It's amazing. I just had uh, a one, a big one happen to me. Uh, what was that yesterday? Where basically we are facilitating. We are using brute force to try and advertise a certain particular piece of our business. And here's somebody else who is already doing it, but actually doing it way better. And they're like, "Yeah, do you want to license what we're currently doing and just kind of add it to your platform, and then we'll do all the work and you make fifty percent of the profits." Yeah, that sounds way better than than what we we're trying to do, right? Like we're gonna we're gonna hire people and try to make them do different tasks that we have no clue what we're even trying to do. We're just gonna make it all up and then make something happen. But it's weird when you put out orders to the universe of what you need or what you want, you know, and then what you receive. I went to I'll, I'll tell you a big law of attraction, which is really crazy in my mind, uh, where a man is made or unmade by himself about what you think about, what you manifest, of what you. If this is getting too woo-woo for you guys, you know, you guys can always just jump off, but maybe you guys love this stuff. I love it. What do you do, Jared? Do you love it? I, I like looking at it like an overview, and then I like to like take it down and <laughs> like, no, like bring it into my life. Like like what you're saying with those, like what you do with like to keep the attract, like positive thoughts, like bringing those into your life, it just it makes me wonder, I'm like, have I been, have I been thinking like that for the past couple weeks? And no, I haven't. Like that's where it's like I need to. Like I do good for a week and then I stop. And like, I think it has to do with you know what you say of like having your routine, and that's what I need to get back. And your routine's key. Yes, it is. And I've been you know I need to get on my readings of like three or four books you have said I need to learn, read. man. Learn education. Yeah. So get this. So I for who knows for how long. Um, sure. Probably since. Probably since I was like 17 or 18, okay? It's like a long time ago. 12 years, 13, 14 years. So I always wanted to be on a private jet, and which is crazy, right? Like that is, that is way the heck out there. And I don't even know if I told this story. You guys are getting all the good stories today. Welcome, welcome to, uh, what's today? What's working now? What's working now on Fridays? It's the best day ever. So this is real, this is raw, it's, it's uh, relevant and it's authentic, so that's what we're here to do. But anyways, 18, 17, I would watch, or learn, I, I guess I wasn't even living in St. Louis yet, kind of was, where like, I would see these private jets, like these freaking nice jets 
fly into the Chesterfield area. And I was like, damn, one day it would be just super cool to just be able to be a fly on, a, on, on one of those on, on a private jet. And for some reason, that was something that I set my, my mind to, like my, my focus on. And what you focus on expands. It's really weird how that works. But it was just still way out there, right? Like, like that's not going to happen. And, but I wanted it to. So every day, so my church, the church I go to, uh, it is practically right next door. You can throw a rock to the airport, and it's the actually the, the private airport that I see these jets coming in. And so every time I would go to church, I would go and just kind of watch the private jets come in and just manifest me being in one. It'd be like just watching the people walk off and watch the people walk on, and I would do cool. I still do this today. It's kind of funny, but I look at the tail numbers, and I'll look up, I'll research who's flying that airplane, like basically see where they fly fly from or where they're flying to and who are they flying off of. Is it a charter jet? Is it a, a jet that's owned by somebody? Like who's that dude that's just got off the, off the thing? Do they fly international? Like just kind of cool stuff like that. But the thing was is I was like, man, it'd be really cool just to go in one. And I think it was when I started doing that, I believe eight months later, I actually got to go in one. What's weird about that is four months prior to that, uh, I was watching, I don't know what I was watching, somebody's Facebook post came up, and it was this girl who, she was a hairdresser for this lady, and this lady's husband was some CEO of something, and they were gonna take the private jet, and so this hairdresser girl was this lady's hairdresser, and so they're gonna be gone for a week, and she wanted her to come to do her hair and everything, and so, they asked her to come on this private jet. I was like, God, like, why? Like, she's taking pictures, like, you know, oh, just get you on this. I was like, man, that's so amazing. Like, why? Like, you're so lucky, right? And um, but I kept manifesting it. And then four months after that picture that I just happened to see on Facebook made it, made it live and real, that I was like, dang. And then it happened. And I, I purchased, uh, or I chartered my first private jet ever. And it was the coolest experience I have ever had. It's, it was a rush. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I think we went to, I think I didn't, I took the parents and I took like everybody, like we did the whole business thing. We went to this this mastermind in Vegas. And what's really funny about it, we get on, on the airline and we walk up into the, um, I don't know, to the, to the main cabin, I guess. And I look over at the pilots and the pilots just chilling. We're like, hey, what's going on? Welcome to, you know, the airlines. And I was like, what's up? I was like, there's no door. You guys got a curtain. And they're like, oh, yeah, like, we don't need doors on these private jets. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Like, thinking, like, damn, like, these guys are trustworthy, right? And because there's no security, you just go right in, and then you're on the plane. Like, no TSA. And no check luggage. Like, it's pretty intense. And so we're on this thing, and usually with, you know, any other airline, they're like, okay, well, you're in the American seat. Are you okay? Are, are you over 18? Can you say yes? None of that. They're like, well, uh, and this is pretty much how it goes. They're like, are you ready? And you're like, and how the yep. seatbelts work? Dude, no. See, that's the next oh, thing. No, and I was like, I was like, do we need to buckle up? Like, where's the seatbelt at? And he's like, oh, dude, you're good. I was like, for real? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, okay. And so off we went. Like, right? Like, we're gone. And it was the coolest thing because, like, we brought drinks on, we brought food on, and we're just snacking and just having a freaking – like cool time. It was just like chill. And I remember, uh, so then we left Vegas and then, oh yeah, that's right. So the, the other thing when we're coming back from Vegas and I go, Hey, I'm totally enjoying this. Like I told him it's my first one. He goes, yeah, it's cool. Like you can totally sleep, uh, on the way back. Most people sleep from Vegas to, to St. Louis or wherever they're going. And in my mind, I'm thinking, hell no, I'm not sleeping. Like I'm taking this all in my friend. Like I am not, I am not wasting sleep on this experience. Like this experience outweighs sleep by far. And so on the way back, we're about to take off. And I, and I told him, I go, um, what's the chances that you can just like gun it? Like just hit it. And he goes, oh, no, that's a, you want that to happen? I said, oh yeah, I want that to happen. He goes, we can make that happen. I said, fantastic. I said, where's the seatbelts? <laughs> and so, so we're all buckled up, you know, not knowing what to expect. And uh, he's just like, you know, you kind of hear him do his little walkie-talkie deal to the tower, and we get we get uh, good good to go, green light to go. 
And I swear, that's exactly what he did. It was like, you hear the engine spool up. It's like, whoop, and it's like, shoom. And I got to tell you, a good friend of mine who was uh, on one of those jets, he goes, you know, you go from zero to takeoff uh, by doing that. Like, there is no runway. It was just like, and we're off, already off the ground somehow. And that was, if you think Six Flags is cool and you think, like, Hollywood Studios is cool, do that. <laughs> like, that's intense. Like, it's like, here we go. Like, suitcases are coming, like, flying down the aisle, and we're having a good old time. And anyways, it was experience. But here's the deal is you can do this too for yourself. You can have everything that you want. You can have whatever it is, whatever you whatever you want. If you want to be like Richard Branson and own Nectar Island of all things, right? If you want to drive the car of your dreams, if you want to have and get out of debt, it all comes back to the law of attraction, the law of the biggest law, right? The, uh, the secret is really what it comes down to is just manifesting and knowing and understanding of what you want and getting clarity in that and being able to Know and, and trust in what you're going to receive when you order it. And I got to tell you one big thing, one big thing before we jump, is if you really want to tell the universe of what you want, if you really want to order something, write it down. Not only write it down, but put it somewhere where you see it every day, where you envision it. Every day, you see yourself. And I put a post on, uh, on my wall the other day, and it's, it goes... Like most people say, say um, when I see it, I'll believe it, right? That's the common phrase. If you twist it, though, when I believe it, I'll see it. So if I believe myself in, in driving a Porsche or a Maserati or a Rolls Royce, or if I believe in myself living in a $5 million uh, mansion, or if I believe in myself owning an island, didn't you see it? Guys, my name is Trey Llewellyn. This is Jared. We are out for the day. This is What's Working Now. Enjoy your Friday. Enjoy your rest of the week. Take that and run with it, my friends, because it'll change your life. Run it. Run it.